there. It's David Duford at davidduford.com, where I help insurance agents like you become top producing insurance professionals. Thanks for joining me today. Today's topic is doing a comparison analysis of selling mortgage protection versus final expense. The reason I'm putting this video together is really to explain the differences between each market and each sales and marketing process to better help you decide for yourself whether mortgage protection sales is a better fit for you or whether selling final expense is uh, better. So without further ado, uh, let's get started. So the first thing that we're gonna compare or look at is the clientele. So there's a big difference in the clientele that you deal with in either mortgage protection or final expense. First of all, mortgage protection clientele are what I would consider to be a middle class, uh, lower middle class market uh, where one or both spouses still work and predominantly the age range is 40 to 60, although that can uh, age uh, be higher uh, as people are buying houses in their 60s, even 70s. So many times that marketing age range is a little bit wider. The big difference uh, between that and final expense is your final expense marketing or market is predominantly people 60 and older with the buyers being nine out of 10 times disabled or retired. So you're dealing more with people who have reached a point in their life where they're on a fixed income and final expense, whereas mortgage protection, they're still working. This does have implications to the actual uh, sales process. More of your mortgage protection sales are going to be done in the afternoons and evenings, whereas with final expense, you can really do final expense at any time, especially in the mornings first thing. Uh, as a final expense agent, I routinely start at 8 in the morning selling face-to-face -face with final expense uh, clients. And many mortgage protection clients, however, will go late. They'll go 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night even in order to get in front of people who otherwise are working throughout the week. Uh, next involved is uh, lead systems. So lead systems are, are in many si in cases, the same. So the best way to market for both mortgage protection or final expense is to use a, a uh, direct mail type of lead program. So that's where, if you have known, aren't aware of this, you, you send a, you get a mail house to send you postcards out. Uh, there's a detachable form at the bottom. The client who's interested fills it out, sends it back, and there is your lead. And you go call on those leads either to set appointments or you just show up unannounced to try to get in. That strategy, showing up announced, is much more prominent in selling final expense. For mortgage protection, there's a lot more appointment setting. You can do either or with both. Certainly final expense, you can do either or. But with mortgage, mortgage protection, it's more appointment setting. Partially the reason is, is that the leads themselves are all over the place as opposed to direct uh, to, uh, final expense, which leads me to my next point. The difference in how the leads are acquired are really uh, important to understand. So with final expense leads, you're working pretty much people in a 50 to 85 age range, or if you can uh, shorten that uh, age range down, that's usually a good thing. And anybody that fits that group, typically in a zero to $50,000 income filter, is a, uh, someone a part of the list. So it's a very broad brush stroke type of marketing strategy. Uh, with mortgage protection, entirely different. You're going after people who have just bought a home and have a mortgage associated with the purchase of their home. So that pool of per people is much smaller than final expense. Even in a large city, what you'll find is, is that there's only so many new home sales weekly and only 1%, 1 1.5% if you're lucky, actually respond to a direct mail piece for mortgage protection. So even with 1,000 new homes, you might only get 10 or 15 leads on average. So the difference is with final expense, it's much easier to saturate an area with leads and get a ton back. Whereas with mortgage protection, just not as easy to do. That's why you see a lot of mortgage protection agents have to cover a very wide scope of geography in order to stay busy. I even have heard and talked to some who travel by plane flight to different areas of the country, allowing leads to accumulate, going to work there for a couple of weeks till hopping over to another area. It's just the way it is. A commission opportunity. So I believe out of final expense and mortgage protection that mortgage protection has the highest average commission opportunity relative to final expense. And the reason is this. Uh, people who make money tend to have more to spend. Not always. 
but with final expense, you're dealing with fixed income prospects. So many of the times you'll sell $20, $30, $40 policies. Not always. Usually the average is around $50, and you'll certainly sell higher than that selling final expense. But with mortgage protection, there's typically a little bit more uh, discretion as to uh, putting money into a uh, life insurance program. So with agents in the mortgage protection business I've talked to, they generally have a higher average case size, thus a higher commission uh, than more uh, final expense. And, and typically, mortgage protection pays around the same uh, on the top end as final expense. The market opportunity. So I believe the biggest difference between mortgage protection and final expense is that mortgage protection is predominantly most exposed to a market shift in the economy. So I was around in the, uh, started in 2011, really in the middle of the Great Recession. And I had talked to agents who transitioned to final expense. I wasn't selling final expense, that's what I started with. And I had talked to agents who transitioned to final expense because what had happened during 2007, 2008, 2009, when the housing crisis was at full force, the pool of opportunities for mortgage protection dropped dramatically. It went down incredibly. It had to because the housing market totally changed, collapsed, less buyers. And so less buyers means less prospects. And if the agent population doesn't change, I meaning it's the same number of mortgage protection agents, there's more agents going after the same small pool of people. And all of this had a dampening effect on the business model. Many of the multi-level marketers out there that recruit to mortgage protection models kind of disappeared for a couple of years and really came back full force 2016-ish. Uh, and so, yeah, so that's kind of what happens when you're in a any market that is literally based on someone making an income. And uh, un unfortunately, final expense has much more recession proof. I wouldn't say it's recession proof, it's recession resistance than mortgage protection. Why? Because everybody we make is on a fixed income. They're, dis they're receiving disability, they're receiving social security, maybe a pension. And the only way that social security, at least, or disability goes away is like when, you know, what hits the fan. I'm going to be in my uh, bunker in the woods living off of my survival food. So, you know, these are things that are unlikely to happen. And, and for example, many final expense companies grew uh, tremendously. Lincoln Heritage, uh, they grew by 10 to 20 percent throughout the Great Recession because their product didn't depend on a good ec economic times or bad. So something to consider, I think anything in the senior market where the purchasing power is highly dependent upon a guaranteed fixed income is going to have a lot more stability than a mortgage protection market or any market that depends on positive economic conditions. Lifestyle capability. So I kind of referenced this early, but I think it's important to understand a big problem that I don't think is talked about much in the mortgage protection space is what happens when you are successful and you run into the circumstance of having to work three, four, five days a week at nights in the field, possibly traveling to cities far away by plane flight or by drive in order to stay busy and successful. This can have a toll on a family. And there may be young people thinking, oh, I don't have a family, I can work. Well, that's good, do it. But there's a lot of you out there maybe interested in this and don't understand that you got to have the volume in order to be successful in any insurance enterprise. And you aren't going to see 10 people a day selling mortgage protection, probably half of that if you're lucky, meaning you're going to have to work multiple days in the field at night and be away from time with your spouse, time spent with your children, because they're usually at school during the day and when you would be home in the mornings and early afternoons. And this long term will have a toll on your capability to run a mortgage protection business successfully. I talked to one gentleman who had seven kids who had sold mortgage protection successfully for years, and his wife had enough of it. And again, you might be thinking, ah, no big deal. But this is something to consider because with final expense, you can really sell this stuff whenever you want to. You can sell it in the mornings, afternoons, evenings. I think to be successful, you do have to work some nights, but you don't have to work a bunch of nights. You can work handful and then work you know, normal business hours, if you will, for the rest of the week. So I think that makes a difference longer term. 
Uh, next one on here, agency building opportunity. I believe out of mortgage protection and final expense, if you're interested long term in building an agency, you're going to have a much easier job building one through final expense. And here's why. It goes back to our earlier point that we talked about with leads. The essence of a successful uh, insurance agency is getting in good, talented people that you can coach and mold to what you want to be successful, but also having a pool of opportunity to extract business from. And with final expense, there is an endless supply of direct mail, Facebook leads, age leads at your disposal to keep your new and experienced agents in your agency busy. And this is critical if you're going to run an agency. You can't bring people on and not have a way to keep them busy. And with mortgage protection, the problem there, again, goes back to the nature of how the leads are generated. Uh, they require covering a multitude of cities over a large geographical basis. My question to you is, if you're going to build a local agency, even a statewide agency, how are you going to keep a half dozen to a dozen people busy? and stay within a reasonable driving distance without affecting lead flow for others. That's kind of the problem. Uh, you can't really work rural areas when it comes to uh, mortgage protection because there's just very few new home sales made there, and it's likely you won't get leads. And if you do, they tend to be well out of the way of your bulk of other leads. So these are just problems from a long-term standpoint. Again, this is why you see a lot of the multi-level marketers in mortgage protection focus on a regional or just a national strategy because it's a bit easier to uh, recruit agents to that idea or that strategy when you're not bound to an area but there's problems with that in the sense that it's harder to train people when you're not face to face with them i think it's immensely easier it's not impossible i do it in my agency but i think it's immensely easier to train people who are local that can do ride-alongs that can meet in an office to get trained and coached and have camaraderie with other people. So I think final expense is the easier out of the options in order to build your own agency. Uh, second to last here on the list is your cross-sell opportunity. So I, I kind of look positively at both of these. M both mortgage protection and final expense do offer a litany of cross-selling opportunity. Uh, with mortgage protection, it's very common to cross-sell uh, index universal life plans, uh, say for college savings plans for grandkids or kids, or as a supplemental life insurance retirement plan. These are perfect and excellent strategies that work very well. Many times with your older mortgage protection uh, prospects, you can find final expense deals as well as annuity rollover opportunities. Maybe someone's got their money in a 401k or in some sort of CD, and then you can move that money and help them out and get them more opportunity out of uh, what they have. And with final expense, similar, you can do a lot of that same stuff with annuities, as I just previously mentioned. You can get referrals to talk to uh, uh, the kids of the grandkids that your grandparents that you sold final expense to to sell IULs. And you can even sell the IUL concept to grandkids that want to do a college savings plan for their uh, grandkids as well. Uh, one thing that's nice about the final expense market is that there is a great renewal opportunity that you cannot necessarily get as often with mortgage protection, and that is through Medicare Advantage. This is something I'm gonna start talking about a lot more frequently on my channel, and it's that combined with final expense, uh, Medicare Advantage allows you to get a high renewal-driven product along with your high first-year-driven product that final expense provides. It's a way, it's a pathway to building your income on a passive basis. In the mortgage protection world, there's just not that much opportunity to build a passive income basis you, unless you build an agency. That's pretty much the only uh, course of action. So I think for final expense agents, uh, if you are interested in cross-selling, it's really, really, I think, extremely important to seriously consider final expense over mortgage protection simply because you have the ability, if you don't want to recruit, and many of you don't, to build a renewal basis income that doesn't require um, recruiting and, and you can just personally produce and make a significant income after several years of investment and commitment so that you don't have to go work if you don't want to. You can at least disconnect some of your income from your activity, which is really important. <clears throat> now, last here, and is an important consideration to make, is quality of business differences between final expense and mortgage protection. Mortgage protection will have a higher persistency than final expense. The only... Uh, the only contingency I would put on that 
is that if the economy collapses and it negatively affects, uh, it's going to negatively affect the mortgage protection business more than final expense. And you may lose a lot of clients that you sold selling mortgage protection uh, within that year's period of time. As most of our income in mortgage protection is based off of new uh, sales because there's usually no renewals involved. So something very important to consider. But generally speaking, the business is much stickier. It doesn't lapse. Whereas the final expense, you're dealing with a low-income population. And to a certain extent, uh, uh, poverty is a mentality as much as it is a financial condition. And a lot of people who are in final expense, who we sell to already own life insurance at some point and lapsed it because they got in a little bit of trouble and they didn't think through things. And it's let's face it, if you're in your 60s or 70s, there is some truth to the fact that if you're looking for life insurance now, just starting, as opposed to your 30s or 40s or younger, you know, maybe that's a problem that's reflective of your bad decisions in life. These are just things that we have to deal with as final expense agents. But persistency-wise, dollar for dollar is going to be lower than mortgage protection. It is manageable. Uh, you, can, you have to sell the right way. and You have to sell the right products. And I think you can keep the persistency question under control. So to conclude, my final thoughts here, what, is, what do I like best? What do I do or what would I prefer an agent to do? I, I'm, I am biased towards this. I mean, there is that book behind me you may have seen. Uh, I don't have a mortgage protection one. And I've only been in the final expense business as a personal producer. But when I first started in the business, I considered mortgage protection. And the main reason I didn't do it is because I felt like I, I just didn't like the fact that the leads seemed a bit more expensive and there didn't seem, seem to be as much opportunity. And probably a lot of it was the fact that we were in the middle of the Great Recession. Looking back now, I can think through that that was probably a big deal. Whereas final expense was recession resistant. It's activity driven. I could see people all throughout the day. It wasn't a complicated product. And I like, I like old people. Old people are cool. And uh, I like selling them stuff. That's uh, just an interesting population that I enjoy dealing with for the most part. So uh, these are the reasons I went into it. All of the downsides of final expense I've certainly experienced, uh, like the quality of business thing. You got to learn to keep that under control. Um, but mortgage protection is a great market too. Um, it's just, I think, in some ways more restrictive longer term than it is, say, with final expense, with the right mentality and the right process. So uh, hopefully that gives you some ideas. Ultimately, what I care about is what's best for you. Uh, I only have my opinions about what I've experienced. You've got to make that determination for yourself. And the best way is just to weigh out the options, which one's better in your interest, and jump in. And you can always just back out and go to the other thing later. Uh, this, these businesses aren't going away anytime soon. And it's important just to pick something that you have more bias towards, preferential to, and take action. David Duford here, davidduford.com, where I coach, recruit, and train insurance agents like you to become top producers. Check me out at davidduford.com. Thanks for watching.